हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी ट्रसेस वॉट आर ट्रसेस ट्रसेस और पिन जॉइंटेड फ्रेम ट्रसेस कैन बी दिस इज इफ देर इज अ पिन जॉइंटेड फ्रेम सपोज दिस इज अ पिन जॉइंटेड फ्रेम वॉट इज अ पिन जॉइंट First, let us see what is a pin joint, and then we will see what is a truss. A pin joint is the one. Let us see this example. This is link one, and this is link two. Here, it is joined by a pin, which means if this this link two rotates about this link one, which means if this is if this link is fixed here. this link to can ro uh, rotate about this ab about this pin joint which means if the link 1 also rotates then link 2 rotates and also translates this is called pin joint if there is a rivet here a rivet or any fastening joint like uh, uh, bolt or rivet then we ca uh, we cannot move this link 2 with respect to link 1 which means if the link 1 rotates in this direction the link 2 also rotates in this direction uh, then it is called a fixed joint this is pin joint a frame which is joined by pins is called pin jointed frame and these members are called trusses the members of the pin jointed frame are called trusses so where are these trusses used we can see in railway stations mm, the footovers are there so those are made of trusses and uh, we can see also in bridges so what are the types of frames uh, there are three types of frames which one, one is perfect frame what is a perfect frame a perfect frame is the one which has sufficient number of members uh, which means it does not deform its shape or it can withstand the loads it is called a perfect frame it has sufficient number of members not more than or not less than only sufficient number so there is a condition necessary condition for perfect frame if this m plus 3 is equal to 2j here m is number of members j is number of joints which means in uh, if we consider this example there are how many members 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 there are to totally nine members are present m is equal to 9 and uh, how many joints are present 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six joints if we if we consider this necessary condition m is 9 plus 3 is equal to 2 into number of joints is 6 which means 12 is equal to 12 so necessary condition is satisfied what is sufficient condition should retain its shape when load is applied this is only a necessary condition if it uh, if it is satisfied it does not mean that it is a perfect frame let us see one example for it suppose there is a frame like this
this is a frame. So if you see here, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 members plus 3 is equal to how many joints? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 joints. So 2 into 6. There are 12. 12 is equal to 12. Necessary condition is satisfied. But it can uh, it cannot withstand the loads because an extra member is present in this section uh, lacking one member in this section. So sufficient condition is not satisfied because if any load acts here it or like this it can uh, it cannot retain its uh, shape. So this is not a perfect frame. In order to satisfy a perfect frame necessary condition and sufficient condition should be satisfied. The next is redundant frame. In perfect frame, the members are sufficient. In redundant frame, if more, no, more members are present than required, then it is called a redundant frame. If you see here, there are how many members? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11 members plus 3 is equal to number of joints is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. This becomes 14 which is not equal to 12. Here 14 is greater than 12, right? So m plus 3 is greater than 2j is the condition for redundant frame. If this satisfy then it is called a redundant frame. We have seen the perfect frame which is equal to m plus 3 is equal to 2j and redundant frame which is m plus 3 is greater than 2j. Then what if uh, it is less than 2j? So deficient frame is the one in which number of members is less than required for a perfect frame. As this is a pin joint as this is a pin jointed frame, this can be moved like this. Okay. So, how can it bear the loads? Even without applying a load, uh, this can be transformed like this. So, this cannot withstand loads. So this is the deficient frame. The frame which can be used for construction purpose are perfect frames. So redundant frames and deficient frames are not allowed. So if we consider this inequation, there are how many members? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 members plus 3 and uh, number of joints is 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6. So 7 plus 3 is 10, which is less than 12. So this is the condition for deficient frame. So these are three types of frames. And next is statically determinate and statically indeterminate frame. These are another type of classification which can help you. In statically determinate frame, the frame can be analyzed only by e equilibrium equations. What are equilibrium equations? Sigma m, sum summation of moments is equal to zero, summation of horizontal forces is equal to zero, summation of vertical forces is equal to zero. Statically determinate frame is the one which can be analyzed by only equilibrium of equations. It is called a statically determinate frame. The example of statically determinate frame is perfect frame which can be analyzed by equations of equilibrium.
statically indeter indeterminate frame if equation of e even even after application of equation of e equilibrium we cannot analyze the frame those are called statically indeterminate frame example is redundant frame so after application of equilibrium equation the frame uh, the frame cannot be analyzed in statically indeterminate frame if one extra member is present in a perfect frame if one extra member is present in a perfect frame then the frame is said to have one degree of indeterminacy which means if one extra member is added this is a perfect frame right this is a perfect frame if one extra member is added one degree of indeterminacy it means if another extra member is added in the frame it means it has two degree of indeterminacy so this frame has two degree of indeterminacy two degree of indeterminacy so what are the assumptions in pin jointed trusses while analyzing pin jointed trusses some assumption some conditions are to be assumed such as the first assumption is the ends of the members are pin connected we have seen from the definition of trusses that the ends are pin connected pin jointed frame this is a pin and another truss is present here so the ends of the members are pin connected which are which can be also called as hinged but in practical use the trusses are connected with bolts or nuts bolts and nuts or rivets in practical but in analysis in theoretical analysis we consider it as a pin jointed frame the loads act only at joints suppose there is a truss like this there is a truss like this the loads does not act here the loads act only at the joints loads does not act at the middle of the cross section or along the length of the cross section so loads only act at the joints and the next one is self weight of members is negligible in previous chapter we have seen in some problems in free body diagram that we have considered the weight of the self weight of the body at the center of gravity but in trusses in truss analysis self weight is neglected because the forces acting on the suppose this is a truss let us say this is a uh, railway foot over members are walking here so the total quantity of members that are walking is very high when compared to the weight, self weight of the members weight is members on bridge is very high when compared to self weight so the self weight of the trusses are to be neglect neglected and another assumption is members have uniform cross section if it has varying cross section then the centroid should lie along the longitudinal line 
it is assumed that the cross section should be uniform if it is not uniform for example there is an increasing cross section like this if there is increasing cross section the centroid should lie on the longitudinal axis so if it should have uniform cross section either it should have varying cross section in which centroid should lie on the longitudinal axis so what are the assumptions the first one is that the members of hinge connected or pin connected the loads act only at joints and not along the length of the cross section and the self weight is negligible members have uniform cross section if it has varying cross section the centroid should lie on the longitudinal axis so another one is how tensile force is taken and how compressive force is taken in while an analyzing the joints if you see here in this example there there are supports here r a and here r d load acts at point e as the load acts at point e the members a e b c e d c d are subjected to internal forces so how these are how these forces are plotted while analyzing the frame for tension we mark the forces on joints but not forces in member which what does it mean if this is a joint bc if this is a joint bc while applying a force downwards the bc the on point c a compressive force is applied on point b a compressive force is applied as this moves downward because this be and ce try to apply forces in this direction as this is invisible force the force inside this the force inside this member applies forces on joints like this so the force applied is in this direction due to force at e but the the truss here the link here is applying the force on the joint in this direction so we mark at the joint we mark the forces at the joint as we can see that due to application of this force e force at point e the bc is in the bc actually is in compression but if we mark this at the joints it becomes like this it looks like tensile but it is compressive if we consider in in member ae if this is moving downwards it tries this ae tries to deform like this which means it is actually in tension this is a this is e it is actually in tension which means the forces apply like this internally the force the forces generated are like this to resist this tension so this is tension 
and this is compression. Compression is represented like this and tension is represented like this. This is, this is very important in analysis of trusses. So then how do we analyze the frame? There are three types of analysis, three methods of analysis. One is methods of joint, methods of section and graphical method. Uh, we have only methods of joints and methods of section. So let us see method of joints. What is method of joints? Just follow these steps and you will get the answer. So first step is select the joint with only two unknowns. If there is no joint of such type, then find the reaction. You will be given a frame and you will be asked to find the all forces in members. So in order to find or analyze the frame, first we need to select a joint which has two unknowns. For example, there is a joint like this. And there is a force applied here, some say some 10 kilonewtons. And uh, if you know this value, some F A B, this is A, this will be, this is C, this is D. And you also know F B C you need to find this is F this is T F B D so if you know F B D and if you don't know F B C and F A B here this joint has two forces 10 kilonewton and you know a force F B D you don't know FAB and FBC then this joint should be selected if there is no joint in the frame if there is a total frame and there is a no there is no joint with two unknown forces with two unknown forces in members then we need to find the reactions for the frame reaction for the total frame so then what is the step 2? Solve the two equations of equilibrium. After select, after finding that if there is a no joint uh, with two unknowns, then we need to find the reactions. After finding the reactions, the, again the joint should be selected with two unknowns. After finding the reactions, absolutely we can find, uh, we can select the joint with two unknowns. Then after selecting the joint with two unknowns, we need to apply the equations of equilibrium. If you select a joint like this, there is a joint like this. All these forces coming to this joint are concurrent, which means they pass through a common point and any other force uh, acting at other joints are not considered while analyzing at this joint. So all the forces are concurrent when selected, when we select a joint. So equations of equilibrium for concurrent forces, we have seen in the last lecture that equations of equilibrium for a concurrent force system is sum of horizontal forces is equal to zero and sum of vertical forces is equal to zero. And when, you, when it is non-concurrent system, we we apply equations of equilibrium as sum of horizontal forces is zero and sum of vertical forces is zero and summation of moments is also equal to zero. But in concurrent system, only two equations of equilibrium are present. So while analyzing the frame, first we consider if there is If there is a if there is a joint like this, these two are members. This is a force applied at this joint. Then first we can, while finding out the forces in these two members, we 
we assume that the forces in these two members are tensile. Then after finding, then after applying these equations of equilibrium, if we get this joint as, if we get this uh, force, is, force in this member as negative, then it is compressive, which means the direction should be in this direction. And if this has positive, then it is tension, tensile. And this direction is correct only. If it is negative, the direction should be reverse and which is compressive. If this is positive, no direction change should be needed, is needed. It is tensile only. Let us see an example so that the concept can be clearly understood. So, this is the one. The first step is to select the joint with two unknowns. Here, this is a joint. This A is a joint which has this R A this is R B and this is suppose it is H A this is a roller joint so there is no horizontal component present here horizontal reaction present here this is a fixed joint so horizontal reaction may be present on the uh, depends on the application of fluids so in order to select a joint there should be two unknown forces only two unknown forces if you consider this joint a r a which is unknown f a e which is unknown f a b which is also unknown H A which is also unknown. There are four unknowns present here. So we cannot select this joint. If we select this joint B, F A B is unknown, F B E is unknown and F B C is also unknown. Only known is 40 kN force that is applied at the joint B. So there are three unknowns at this joint B. If you consider C, F B C is unknown, F C E is unknown, F C D is also unknown the only known is 50 kN which is applied at point C. So the unknown is 3. This cannot, this also cannot be selected. E also cannot be selected because F A E, F B E, F B E C and F E. These four are unknowns. If D is selected, R D is unknown, E D is unknown, C D is also unknown. So this cannot also be selected. If in, in this frame there is no joint with two only two unknowns, so if there is a no joint with two unknowns, we need to find the reactions. Then how to find the reactions? For total frame we apply equilibrium of equations. What are equilibrium of equations? Sigma m is 0. sigma m is 0, sigma horizontal force is 0 and sigma vertical forces is 0. So consider sigma m is equal to 0. About which point let us say about A, about point A. If you consider about point A, what are the forces acting 40 kN, 50 kN, 60 kN and Rd. Let us say clockwise as positive, anti-counterclockwise as negative moment. Okay. If you consider force 40, newt 40 kN, R A and H A passes through the point A, so there is no perpendicular distance. So moment of moment of this moment of this force about point A is zero, and moment of this force about point A is zero. 
so another force is 40 kilo newton this is 60 this is 60 and this is also 60 so this is an equilateral triangle and it divides it into one meter equals equal halves this is two meter and this is one meter so 40 kilo newtons 40 into the perpendicular distance this perpendicular distance is one meter 40 into one which is clockwise this four this 40 kilo newton four try to rotate the frame in clockwise direction and 50 kilo newton also rotate try to rotate in clockwise direction so plus 50 into the distance is this is 2 meter and this is 1 meter so 2 plus 3 is 2 plus 1 is 3 meters and next is 60 kilo newton this also try to rotate in clockwise direction so 60 into 2 60 into 2 and next force is RD which tries to rotate in anti-clockwise direction so it is minus RD into the distance perpendicular distance is 2 plus 2 which is 4 0 if you solve this if you solve this moment equation we get RD is equal to 77.5 kilo newtons and another and another one is sigma fh is equal to 0 if you see here the horizontal forces in this frame are H A and another force we, uh, this is a reaction but no force is applied here so the one force in the the one force which is horizontal in the frame is H A which is equal to zero because another any other force is not present horizontally another equation of equilibrium is sigma F V is equal to zero so what are the forces let us say 40 plus 50 plus 60 these are downward direct these are in downward direction and in upward direction is ra plus rd which is equal to ra plus rd how did we how did we get this if you consider upward forces as positive r a plus r d are positive and what are the downward forces minus 40 minus 50 minus 60 the summation of all these forces is equal to 0 so that we get this then r a plus r d is equal to 60 plus 40 is 100 plus 50 is 150 already we know r d so R A is equal to 150 minus R D which is 150 minus what is R D 77.5 kilo Newton so 150 minus 77.5 is 72.5 kilo Newtons so R A and R D are found out and next after finding the reactions we need to find the joint we need to select the joint with two unknowns so if you see here this force is zero we know r a we don't know f a e and f a b so select this joint a because it has only two unknowns so we can select the joint If you select this joint, this is the joint A. There is a force 
R A which is equal to 72.5 newtons 72.5 kilo newtons and uh, and we have seen that if we don't know any force we consider the, we consider first we assume it as tensile so this is fae and after analyzing this joint we get plus or minus values so we can change the direction this is fab these are assumed directions so we so this is a concurrent force system if you consider this joint a this is a concurrent force system so equations of equilibrium we need to apply the step 2 what is step 2 equations of equilibrium are to be applied at the selected joint so what are the equilibrium equations when it is a concurrent force system it is sigma f v which is summation of vertical forces is zero summation of horizontal forces is zero so summation of vertical forces let us consider this this is 60 degrees what are some uh, vertical forces there is r a and component for component of force f a b vertical this is f a b horizontal so this is 60 degrees f a b and this is also f a b sorry f a b vertical component this is also f a b vertical component what is vertical component so this is 60 degrees opposite let us take opposite by f a b vertical by f a b which is sin 60 F A V vertical is equal to F A V sin 60. So R A we have considered this as tensile. So F A V vertical is also in this direction or assumed direction. So R A plus F A B vertical is equal to 0. There is no other vertical force present at this joint so r a plus what is f a b vertical f a b sin 60 so f a b sin 60 is equal to 0 what is r a 72.5 plus f a b what is sin 60 root 3 by is equal to 0 so we get f a b as minus 83.72 kilo newtons so the assumed direction which is in tensile which is in tension is wrong in f a b so actually it is compressive let us represent the actual direction with green color the one with green color is actual direction so f a b is f a b is equal to 83.72 kilo newton which is compressive So by applying the horizontal equilibrium equation, we got F A B. Now let us up. We have applied the vertical equilibrium equation. Now let us apply horizontal equilibrium equation, which is sigma F H is equal to zero. What are the forces? 
which are horizontal in this fa is horizontal and fab h is also horizontal so fab horizontal acts in this direction and fae acts in this direction so considering the right as positive considering the force rightwards as positive fae is positive and fab horizontal is negative is equal to zero what is fab horizontal fab horizontal is equal to this one right the component of force fab horizontal is if you consider this triangle if you consider this triangle cos 60 is equal to f ab horizontal divided by fab so fab horizontal is equal to fab cos 60 so we can apply this here fae minus fab cos 60 which is fab horizontal is zero fae is equal to fab cos 60 we know fab value what is it 83.72 kilonewtons 83.72 into cos 60 what we get here 83.72 into cos 60 is 41.86 kilonewtons and next we have got the forces at joint a which are f ab and f ae we got the forces in f ab and f ae so uh, the other forces which are left is f bc f de f ce f cd and f ed these are all forces left next if we consider joint d in uh, if we consider joint d the unknown forces are f ed and f cd so there are two unknown forces and we know rd value also so there are only two unknown forces if you consider this joint d this is rd which is 77.5 kN and assuming it as tensile this is fbc and it is also assuming it as tensile fed applying equilibrium equations vertical force summation of vertical forces is zero what are the vertical forces rd is vertical force and another one is plus fdc vertical these two forces are vertical forces which is equal to zero we know rd value it is 77.5 kN and fdc vertical this is 60 degrees right if this is 60 degrees this is the vertical component which can be plotted here this is the vertical component which is equal to fdc vertical so what is the vertical component plus fdc sin 60 which is zero so what is the value of fdc fdc is equal to minus 89.5 kN so the assumed direction is wrong actually it has direction compressive it is compressive force and it is not tensile one so we got fdc
and another force is FDE. In order to find it, we apply so F DC is equal to F DC is eighty nine point five kilo newton. <coughs> Sorry, compressive. So in order to find the force in F E D. we need to consider another equilibrium equation f sigma f h is equal to zero f e d there are forces f e d and a component f d c horizontal so we have known that this is a compressive force and f dc horizontal acts in this direction and f ed acts in this direction considering rightward direction as positive f dc horizontal is positive and f ed is negative which is zero so f dc horizontal which acts in this direction f dc horizontal so f d c horizontal can be given by f d c cos 60 minus f e d is equal to 0 what is the value of f d c 89.5 cos 60 minus f e d is equal to 0 f e d is equal to what is the value of f e d 44.75 44.75 kilo newtons so this is the actual direction which means it is tension so we have found f e d f d c and also f f a e and f a b we have found f a b f a e f d e and f d c another forces left are f b c f b e f c e these are the forces left we need to found we need to find if we consider the joint b draw the joint b how is the joint b if this is b this is fbc assuming the initial direction to be in tens tension this is 40 kilo newton which is applied we know the force fab which is compressive this is fab and the value of fab is 83.72 kilo newtons 83.72 kilo newtons and we don't know the force f ve this is fbe we don't know it so assuming it to be tensor this is 60 degrees so applying the equations of equilibrium at the joint e at the joint b so one is sigma fe is zero what are the horizontal uh, sorry what are the uh, vertical forces fab fab sin 60 and another one is 
minus 40 which is acting downwards and FBE FBE sine 60 so these are all the vertical forces present in the joint B which is equal to 0 we know the force FAB so FAB is 83.72 83.72 sin 60 minus 40 minus FBE sin 60 is equal to 0 if we solve this equation we get FBE as FBE is 37.53 kilonewtons 37.53 kilonewton so the assumed direction is correct which is tensile tensile so we got FBE and we need to find the force FBC so another equation of equilibrium is sigma FH is equal to 0 what are the horizontal forces that are present at the joint B it is FBC and the component of FBE and another horizontal component of force FAB so component of force FAB horizontal component of force FAB is given by FAB cos 60 which is here and FBE cos 60 FBE cos 60 and another one is FBC all these forces are in the rightward direction is equal to 0 so we know the value of FAB which is 83.72 kilonewton cos 60 plus FBE is found to be as 37.53 cos 60 plus FBC which is equal to 0 FBC is equal to 60.62 kilonewtons minus 60.62 kilonewtons so the direction which we have assumed is wrong the direction should be compressive this is the compressive direction so FBC is equal to 60.62 kilonewton compressive okay and the force left we need to find is C so if you follow the similar method consider it as, a, as an assignment and find the force C you get the value uh, and find the forces which are need, uh, the force left we need to find is FCE only the force FCE is to be found you solve this problem and you get it as 31.76 kilonewton okay this is the method of joints and uh, another one is method of sections so what is method of sections we have seen in method of joints by applying the equations of equilibrium at the joints so first let us see when is method of sections used when in the question it is asked to find the forces in few members when there is a long uh, large frame then we apply method of sections and uh, 
when method of joints fails fail to start if uh, method of joints cannot be applied or it, it, it is a it, it fails to start then we apply method of sections so how to find how to analyze the frame by using method of sections first step is to find the reactions of the frame so we need to find the reactions as in the method of joints in step 2 cut the structure into two parts the section should pass not more than three members in which forces are unknown we need to cut the section into two parts the total frame into two parts so that the section should cut the should cut not more than three members which means it should not cut the it should not cut four members or five members it should cut only up to a maximum of three members in which forces are unknown forces should be unknown in those three members then equilibrium equations are to be applied on one side of the section if you cut section if you cut the frame into two parts by using a section the frame is divided into two parts one is left side and one is right side so this can be analyzed by applying equations of equilibrium on one side and on one side uh, for which we are comfortable to analyze the truss so let us consider this problem there is a large truss here and it is asked to find that find the forces in fh hg and gi fh hg and gi if it is asked to find like this only the forces in uh, certain members then we need to apply the method of sections so first we need to find the reactions after finding the reactions we need to cut the section into two parts so the length of each member given is 4 meters so this is r a and this is r o there is no horizontal force present in, uh, horizontal force which is applied here so there is no reaction in horizontal horizontal reaction is zero only vertical reactions are present as this is a uh, due to symmetry r a and r o will be equal and it is half of the load applied half of the total load applied so the total load applied is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 total seven loads of 10 kN are present so ra is equal to ra is equal to ro is equal to half of the total load is total seven loads are present each has 10 kN of load so 35 kN is the reaction at point a and point o r a and r o is equal to 35 kN so we uh, we need to find the forces in fh hg and gi cut the, cut the total frame by considering the section like this check whether it passes through not more than three members so it passes through three members and three of these members are unknown forces so if we draw the frame on the left side on this side so it is so it will be easy to, easy for us to analyze if you consider this we need to find all these forces to simplify it we are considering the section on the left side
this is the section right this is 35 kilometer and it is 10 here it is 10 here it is 10 this is point a b c d e f g these are three unknown forces if there are there are unknown forces then let us consider them as tensile force first this is this is point h this is point i let us consider this as tensile so f f h this is f g h and this is f g i apply equilibrium equation uh, sigma m sigma m about point g is equal to 0 if you apply it what are the forces f f h into what is the distance between this point this is 4 this is 4 the height is this is 60 degrees right this height will be 4 sin 60 4 sin 60 and another one is 35 this 35 35 into the distance is 1 4 4 8 12 35 into 12 meters and another one is minus 10 into Ten, because this will be two this is four this is four so four plus four plus two it is ten meters which is anti-clockwise direction and another one is ten into ten into this will be two this is four so four plus two six and another ten newtons another ten kilonewtons this is two 10 into 2 and these forces F, G, I and F, G, H passes through the point G so there will be no perpendicular distance so moment will be 0 for those forces about the point G then F, F, H F, F, H is equal to minus 69.5 to 8 kilonewtons so the the direction which we have considered is wrong it should be compressive what is the force f f h so this will be in this direction f f h so f f h is equal to 69.28 kilonewtons compressive and the next one is next equilibrium equation is sigma vertical forces is equal to 0 what are the vertical forces 35 kilonewtons upwards and plus F F F G H F G H has a vertical component vertical component which is F G H sin 60 plus F G H sin 60 and uh, there are three forces minus 10 minus 10 minus 10 
which is equal to 0. We get fgh as minus 5.77 kilonewtons. So the assumed direction is wrong, it should be compressive. So fgh is compressive. FGH is equal to 5.77 kilonewtons. So another another force is FGI. FGI is horizontal, and we need to apply horizontal force equilibrium equation. So what are the forces? FGI, which is in rightward direction, and uh, F F H which is in leftward direction. See the green color which is actual direction. So F F H and another one is F G H is in this direction. So F G H cos 60 will be the horizontal component which will be in leftward direction. So minus fgh cos 60 is equal to 0 we know the values of f fh and fgh so fgi will be fgi will be 72.17 72.17 kilonewtons so this is positive and it is tension. This is how method of section is used. So in gate, some problems will be asked to find the zero members. There will uh, uh, he gives a frame and asked to find the zero mem zero force members, which means those uh, those members do not carry do not uh, carry any forces. So. In order to find the zero force members, uh, simple trick is used. If there are two members at a joint and no external force acts on the joint, then those two members are zero force members. Which means there are two members at this joint and no force is acting on this. So these, fo these members are not required and uh, these members do not carry any force and another one is if there are three members at a joint and two members are collinear then the third member is zero force see there are three members at this joint and three members at the joint and in which two forces are collinear these two are collinear and this third member has the zero force if two members are collinear then third member has zero force. Let us see this uh, uh, this first one with an example. Uh, there is a truss like this. And there is a load acting like this so if we consider this joint there is no force acting on this and there are two members so these two members these two members are zero force members in this this is the zero force member and these two are not zero force members this is all we find the zero force members. So that's it for the process. If this video is helpful for you, please like and share with your friends and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for to get the notifications on the updates. Thank you.